is everyone's on their own path, on their own journey. And if people can look at a group of guys that are on that journey and find some sort of inspiration in that, then that's what it's all about, really. That's what I like about cast. It's you know brought guys into my life that have lit a fire under my ass about my fishing. You know, it's given me the given me a good reason to push myself as well. You know, I was pretty happy doing what I was doing, chasing snapper a couple of times a week and doing pretty well at it. But then meeting these guys who are achieving all these other goals, it's, it's given me inspiration. So if it inspires me, it's going to inspire other people. Yeah, well, the thought was to get these two guys on a trip where we could go and explore some new areas. Everyone had to sort of line up their own timetables and then get time off and, and that sort of thing. But when the weather turned a little bit dodgy, we still went ahead with it. We decided to um, go to sort of Dan's Bread and Butter, which is the estuary side of things, rather than going off and exploring just yet. And then it looks like we're going to get a, a window of opportunity where we're going to be able to go and do that. So that's exciting to get these two guys in the same boat and see what they can come up with. I myself did a little bit of research and found out what cast was sort of what their deal was. And obviously they had pretty much the same values as I do as a fisherman. Got mixed phone number and had a quick chat to him. And then about two weeks later, he was arriving in Rocky on a plane. And... When, when he said who I was fishing with, he said, oh, you're fishing with a guy called Dan Powell. The actual bounty experience fishing with him was, it was awesome, to be honest. I learned heaps. And above all, um, Stefan did mention that we'll, it would probably be two blokes who would get on pretty well. And that's the case. And, and he's become one of my good mates. I actually didn't want to read his article at first because I was like, you know what? I've done Google Earth a million times. What could I possibly learn? And I read that article and I was like, Oh my God, I, now I have to go back and I've got to relearn everything that I thought I knew. And yeah, I guess that goes to show that that's fishing for you. You never really know what you know. You know what I mean? There's always something else that you can learn. Just to know that he's been there and done that so many times, you, you get a feel for his experience when you see something like that. You know, you know when a guy, his heart stays the same rate when he's onto somebody's fish of a lifetime that he's experienced that a couple of times, you know? Big kingy, I reckon. Nice fish, very subtle take. Good job. Oh, oh yep. Bigger back than I do. Oh, oh you're right. Got him. Oh, that's a bit better. Oh, he's a good fish. That's a nice fish. <laughs> oh, my lord. Look at that thing. <laughs> that's what we're talking. The Barramundi were growing up in Rockhampton, the, the Fitzroy was right there and mum and dad only lived a couple of kilometres away from the river so I was on my pushy um, down there and it started off with live perch and then live mullet, live prawn and just graduated from there into lures and, and obviously Barramundi are a brilliant target species for lure. Um, they can be extremely rewarding but as we found today, extremely frustrating. Um, so you sort of, it's a, it's a species that you think you know, but you don't know. Well, I used to live in central Queensland when I was younger. I left and moved to Brisbane when I was 19 and it, I didn't really chase barra, to be honest. I, I chased small creek fish on live bait. Ever since I moved away, I've seen barra mundi become a massive thing in the impoundments. And then obviously it's everyone's dream to tangle with a big barra in the salt water. You know. It was pretty tough fishing today, but managed to get away. Snuck away from the boys on the camera crew and then peeled off 110. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm stoked, to be honest. High on life. Unreal. 
unbelievable fish actually. Once I let it go, I just laid down on the deck and just took it all in. So yeah, it was awesome. Nick had a, had a smile on his face. It was like a little, like a little schoolboy. <laughs> Big high five, bit of a handshake, and um, it was sort of you drive. Well, those boys from, uh, from Brisbane drove 10 or 11 hours to get to a fishing spot, and one fish has just made the trip for not only the guy who caught it, but for all the guys that are around him. It's when you go away with other guys, it's it's a team effort. It's not yourself. It's it's team and. You're helping, you're helping others to try and achieve what they want to achieve. This one's for Dan for dinner. <laughs> that is hands down the biggest thing in my life I've ever landed. And that is exactly why we did this. Dream to see fish. When I first met Dan, and he mentioned that he was on a, you know, a bit of a search for a, for a triple tail, which obviously pretty, pretty difficult fish to catch. Not a lot of people target them, from my knowledge. That was really the catalyst for me to uh, click in my mind that it, we could bring together a few guys that were like-minded. Um, I'd obviously struck up a relationship with Fez, and he was very species specific at that time, chasing uh, giant trevally in his local waters. Just trying to work that out for himself over a period of time and then with uh with dan's triple tail mission i thought you know they're sort of they're two guys that really have a lot of things in common there was another guy that was involved in cast um chris everyone knows him as fez who was obviously on the same journey so it was two guys that had had similar interest in the not in the species but in the journey to get to the species which drew us together we connected when it came to chasing those niche species to be able to bounce ideas off a guy like that, I mean, you know, you're getting a, a huge depth of knowledge. The challenge has been unbelievable. So the focus on one species has been um, a really, really incredible journey for me because I can, even though I've been targeting one species, the, the areas it's taken me, because I've had to look outside my normal approach to fishing. So I've had the um, approach of, well, if I catch something, I, I do, and if I don't, I don't. It's, I'm, trying to achieve something that not a lot of guys achieve. It just highlights the fact that that sort of stuff doesn't come easy. If you want to get that sort of stuff done, it, you need to put in the work and you need to really dedicate yourself to it. And there's a lot to be learned from that. I set out 100% confident when I catch triple tail. 80% of the time I don't. I do a lot of donuts, countless donuts. But um, that's it, that's what it is. If they were easy, everyone would do it. A lot of guys are afraid in these days not to catch anything. If you don't catch anything, it's all doesn't really matter. Like you're trying, if you're working towards something, not catching something is part of the journey. Everyone, everyone that's catching good fish has at one stage, or a lot of the time, caught nothing. So don't be afraid to not catch anything. But. Yeah, the, the story of Dan and the triple tail is something that really stands out and I admire solely. <laughs>